Welcome to another tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be looking at a an update on super slow slow motion. Now most times when you do slow motion, say here we have Adobe Premiere, you might use another program. If you go to um, speed and duration and you want to slow it down, if you slow it down a lot, you'll find that when you play it, it jerks. It starts it it jerked. Dit, 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 dit. That's because what the program basically does is it just takes a frame and repeats it a number of times before uh, making the next one. It just copies a frame several times and so you get these steps. Now that's not a very efficient way of doing it. We can do it a lot smoother and a lot better if we put that back to 100% speed and we're back to our 50 frames. Now when you're with a piece of interlaced footage, here is one very interesting thing about the interlaced footage. It's two fields. So instead of being 50 actual frames, you've actually got 100 half frames or 100 fields. Now if we could split those half fields into actual fields, then we should be able to get 100 frames that don't actually repeat their individual frames. Now you can use a cross-platform program, AvidMux 2.5 at the moment of making this tutorial, or you can use Virtual Dub for Windows 1.9.11 at the moment. Now if we go to AvidMux, and here we have it open, we can open a file, we're going to open our parrots, and it notices it is an H.264 piece of video we're going to go to the output uh, window or pane with this button here to see how many frames we've got. Now if we go to the end with you'll find that we have actually got our 50 frames by the time we get to it. Now if we go to the video and select a codec to work with we have access to our filters. And if we go to the interlacing filter we can select the DG Bob double click on it and it will give you some parameters. You can select fields, top or bottom, but we're not going to worry at the moment. And in the bottom box here we have three options. The bottom one, double NB, which is the number of frames for slow motion. And we can OK that. If we and playing it through it has given us double that frame rate. And now we can go to File, Save, Save the Video, and export that as a video file. And save that as a name. And it will save it off for you. OK. Now, if you want to use Virtual Dub, I'm using 1.9.11. Open it up. And if you have a video file like a DV or one that the program recognizes, it should just open it up. OK. And here we have it. But if you have a file like an MPEG-4 that the program will not recognize, you will need to open up and download AVI Synth. Uh, AVI Synth is a frame server and there are two versions at the moment you can download. One is just version 2.5.8 uh, and that's for 32-bit uh, and that will work with Windows 7 and if you have Windows 7 64-bit you'll have to install AVI Synth 2.5.8 first and then the 64-bit version, same as that so that it will work. It won't install all the files properly in the right place for the 64-bit one, so you have to, and then you have to copy two files, I think it is the uh, devil, L DLL, and one more there, but read the instructions and it will tell you how to do that. Okay, so now we have that. You're going to have to open up your notepad. You're going to write a a script in your notepad you need to write the words direct show source in one word open brackets quotation marks then the path to your video file 
quotation marks and then close the brackets again. When you save it, you go File, Save As, and instead of a text file, go to All Files and give it an extension AVS. And here we have the file that I have the number, and I've already done that one for you, so save and off you go, but I'll just cancel right now. That gives you the script that Virtual Dub can now open. It will go and navigate to that, open that text file, and AVI Synth will frame serve that file and I'll go to 50% because it's high definition and so this is a way of working with high definition in a virtual dub. Whichever way you go, a file, just an AVI or a file DV or whatever that virtual dub can handle or using AVI synth to serve the frames to the program you can do that. Now to deinterlace you need to go to video, filters, then add there is one called deinterlace here which you're going to OK and you have some options. The interlace using the algorithm is the default and that's OK. On the right hand side you can see double frame rate either the top or the field, bottom field first. You go OK oops, and then select one of those like the top one and go OK and I already have it once so I only need it once there and OK it will now, instead of giving me 50 frames, you can see now it's given me 100, 104. It's separated those those frames out into uh, those fields out into frames. You can now go to your compression settings and set a codec. For example, a Lagerith lossless codec you can download and install is OK. And then file, save that off, save as an AVI and call it something like that and it will go through and save those off. So this process basically gives you a doubling of your frame rate without repeating any of your frames yet. So now you can then apply a slow motion if you aren't going to go any further than this and you get a, tw a piece of video footage twice the smoothness of using just a straight repetitive frame method. Now here we are back in our editing program, in this case Adobe Premiere, it might be Final Cut or whatever. Now if I import that video that we have now made longer, you'll notice that in Premiere at least it looks just the same length as the other one. That is because it, we will need to interpret the footage. It exported from Virtual Dub as 59 frames, well 60 frames a second, we need to be able to put that back to 30 or 29 points, whatever it is, uh, and OK that. And then when we bring it down onto the timeline you can now see it is twice the length again. And it is going to run at half the speed and that's without having repeated a single frame. And because we haven't repeated any frame at all, then we can make it go twice as slow before it starts stuttering. Now there's good news for Windows operating systems. You can go even slower yet again by um, not only interpolating the fields, but you can also interpolate frames. That means taking one frame and the next frame and then calculating a new frame, not a repeat frame. Now in order to do that, in Virtual Dub you will need to change the size of it. So you open your video and in this case I, op I saved it uh, with a Lagerith compression and so therefore I can now open that without making a script. And here it is at twice the frame, the hundred and whatever frames. Now we need to change the frame size through a filter by adding one that is resize. In resize I want to disable the as pixel aspect ratio because I'm now going to want to make the video as multiples of 16. Now that means that it's going to be something like um, 1088 frames by 1920. If we get our calculator we can go 1920 divided by 16 
that means 320 that's okay but if we go uh, 1080 divided by 16 it's going to be 67.5 which is not what we want we want 10 1088 divided by 16 equals 68 a whole number so our frame size is going to be changed to 1920 by 1084 high definition video multiples of 16 matters okay and okay that and then we once again can go to our compression I'm going to select a logarith lossless again and then export that as for example slow uh, resize and it will go through and resize that video for me in readiness for using the plugin for AVI synth to interpolate those frames now this high definition will take quite a while of rendering so I'll just for the sake of this tutorial open up a just an ordinary DV one at standard resolution and so it'll be a lot quicker for you and me now the same thing goes we want to go to our filters add a resize filter and multiples of we disable the aspect ratio and if we get our calculator 720 divided by 16 is going to be 120 that's an okay size so 480 divided by 16 is going to be 30 so it looks like our file is going to be multiples of 16 and so we're okay we can now okay that so in this case we don't need to save that off because it is already a file with multiples of 16 but if it you do have a video size it is not a multiple of 16 you can use that resizing facility now the next thing to do is that you are going to now want to download a plugin which is called AVI Synth MSU Frame Rate Conversion Filter. You can find that at www.compression.ru. The MSU FRC.zip. That's the one you're going to be looking for. And you're going to take the MSU FRC DLL, copy that, and then go to your installation. Uh, folder where you have put your AVI synth or install it in this case it's program files and then put it into the plugins and paste it in there and I had already had it there from before but that's where you're going to put it so that AVI synth can find that plugin when you have installed that you will then need to go to your notepad again write that first piece of code with the direct show source and the path in brackets and quotations like before to find your video but you're going to put this extra piece of code you've got these words convert to yv12 brackets brackets dot msu underscore frc and then the four is how many frames the program the plugin is going to interpolate for you and slow means you're going to do it uh, slow but well calculated the best quality basically so when you go back to your script here the path and everything save that then in virtual dub you can then go and open the video file and open that script that you have saved to get the video to come in now you'll notice that instead of a hundred frames it's now given me 200 frames it's, it has taken every single frame and added another frame between that so I've now got 200 frames so it's going to be nice and slow now without any repetition of frames it actually invents frames between the other frames so in this case when we wrote this piece of code the convert to YUV12 uh, YV12 space that's the color space it needs to work in brackets brackets then it tells the plugin MSUFRC to interpolate. Four means that it takes one frame and the another frame and then adds another two between, so you end up with four frames. 
So in that case, we're with virtual dub, the 100 frames that I had before is now turned into 200 without a single repetition. Once again, I can go to my compression check when I'm going to go for, then save that off as well. Slow motion. Okay, save. And now it will write to hard disk those interpolated invented frames. And now that we are back in Premiere, we can now open up the one we have just rendered and find, once again, it's going to give it a strange frame rate. So I'm going to now modify, interpret the footage. You can see that it, that it is 100 and 19 frames per second. We're going to give it 30 frames a second being NTSC and we're going to obligate it to conform to widescreen. And now when we put it down there it's going to be a lot bigger. Remember we were using standard footage in now in a high definition project. But basically there we are. It is now four times the length. Okay, and you can see now that we've got a very smooth slow motion at four times, in other words, 25%, a quarter of the speed with not a single frame repeated yet. So we've now separated out the fields to double it and then interpolated another two frames between each of those to quadruple the number of frames without repeating a single one. Now we can go to the speed and duration as well and if we were to then cut it down to say 20% again it's going to be extremely long. It's now that's about 10 times the speed. It's around about 19 times slower. So you're going to get it four times as smooth or smoother than the conventional slow motion. So you can go down a lot slower before it really starts to affect. So save that one off and you're done. Super slow motion.